Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you had a good lunch. I have the enviable task of uh, getting you out of your food coma. Um, <laughs> so I'm presenting on behalf of Dimitro and the other, the rest of the team in Karachi, who's been doing wonderful work. Unfortunately, none of them could make it here today. Uh, the, the, the title of the, uh, the abstract they submitted and the work they're doing, what I'm presenting today, is Hepatitis C Treatment in a Primary Healthcare Clinic in the High Hepatitis C Virus Burden Setting of Karachi, Pakistan. Just to give you some context, um, so this is a, a map of Pakistan with hepatitis C seroprevalence in Pakistan at the district level. Karachi is a city, a coastal city, and um, it's um, the largest mega me megapolis of the, of the country. It's a financial hub. Since 1947, there have been refugees, migrants, IDPs that have migrated there, so it's quite a melting pot. Um, hepatitis C infection in Pakistan, to give you some background on that, there was a national prevalence survey conducted in 2007-2008 by Pakistan Medical Research Council of hepatitis C virus antibody uh, seropositivity, which showed it to be at 4.9%. Later on, between 2010-2015, a systematic review was also conducted, um, which showed an even higher adult Pakistani population prevalence of 6.8%. However, given that the census in Pakistan hasn't been conducted since 1998, making large estimates is, uh, is difficult to do. It's not very uh, reliable. Um, I will, however, give you an idea based on current research. Provincial prevalence data varies considerably. In Sindh, so we have four provinces. Sindh, it's 5%. Punjab, it's 6.7%. Balochistan, 1.5%. And Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, not listed on the slide, is 1.1%. There are pockets of higher prevalence. Um, what I mean by that is that within the city, there's urban, peri-urban, and rural. Um, you've got within districts as well as within the different provinces. So very big, different, uh, there's a lot of variabilities of high prevalence. Yeah. Give you a context of where the study was conducted, where the work was done. MSF intervention has been in Machar Colony in Karachi. Machar Colony itself is an informal settlement. Uh, the population, according to MSF's project document, is 1,50,000, oh, sorry, 150K, yeah, and 300,000. Uh, MSF primary healthcare clinic has been there since 2012, which is actually when I joined there as well. Um, and initial, the fo initially, the focus was on emergency care. So it was a standalone uh, emergency care. Uh, however, they changed the project orientation and uh, to suit the needs better to the population. And MSF is working with the CNA over there. Hepatitis C was, uh, was recognized as an important health issue because of all the global work done that. Uh, in this regard and screening because of this was started by MSF in March 2015. So therefore it is now a primary healthcare clinic uh, and it has a focus on hepatitis C. Uh, treatment of chronic hepatitis C virus infection was also started later that year in May 2015. To give you an idea of uh, the care delivery, it's an integrated primary care facility. Um, it started off as a little corner in the setting, so it was, it was a small corner and over there it was dedicated. They had GPs there who were trained and they were only specializing and working on this. The rest of the care, we mean the lab, the mental health support, the nurses, all of that is integrated, so it's shared with the rest of the, uh, the uh, setting and the facility. Um, and the good thing about this is that the colony, uh, it suits their needs, uh, the primary care healthcare setting. Um, screening was conducted according to WHO guidelines, so there was rapid diagnostic point of care tests. Chronic hepatitis C confirmation was done via PCR later. Then uh, you know you know about the APRI score, uh, so it's a uh, it's a ratio index of AST and platelets. It was used to stage initiation of the treatment, okay, for staging, so prioritize treatment. Um, so Fosbuvir and weight-based ribavirin at 12 or 24 weeks was used, um, and that's why it was important, I'll come back to that, as to why it's 12 or 24 weeks, it's based on genotyping. Um, the treatment, we have hepatitis C virus viral load was conducted at baseline, end of treatment, and for 12 weeks after treatment completion to ensure there's no relapse or to check for it. Uh, data was collected under routine programmatic conditions, um, and because this was the standard of care, MSF provided, uh, its ethic review board provided an exemption in this regard. Okay, 
so we have the results. Uh, we have 4,589 patients of MSF clinic was screened between March 2015 and April 2016. 27% of these were hepatitis C virus antibody positive. A total we had was of 1598. Some of them were screened within uh, the clinic, some of them from outside, but uh, totally we had a 1598. That was our population. 25% um, of these patients had APRI already greater than one. Um, and the, uh, as you know, APRI gives you an idea of how uh, bad the fibrosis and cirrhosis is. Um, so we have 368 hepatitis C virus genotype results were already available. I'll show you that in the next slide. Uh, this is the distribution of the hepatitis C uh, genotypes. Uh, the green area is uh, the genotype type 3, which is the most common in Pakistan as well. As, uh, as and It's also what we found in our results, followed by type 1 and then type 2. So it's exactly the same distribution in Pakistan currently. Okay. Um, the re according to the re results, we had 300 patients who initiated their treatment between April 2015 and May 2016. Uh, 136 of these patients completed their treatment. Uh, 135 had, therefore had negative PCR at completion. One still had positive. 15 were lost to follow up. And one patient discontinued treatment due to other medical reasons. 155 patients, so that's almost 51%, are still on treatment. This is an in-clinic part of the cascade to give you an idea. I hope, yeah, I hope you can see that clearly, the labels on the axis. Um, to give you an idea, this is the complete follow-up outcomes. Unfortunately, uh, given that this was in routine programmatic conditions, we only have 45 completed follow-ups. So the end of treatment response was uh, though at 95%, which is quite high and did, we didn't expect that. And uh, the SVR12 uh, was 78%. So this is comparable to a lot of clinical trials and that was also what was very surprising. Clinical trials show between um, 75 to 95% of SVR and it this was 78, so that was uh, under routine pro uh, programmatic conditions, which is quite uh, incredible. Um, relapse was of only one patient. Loss to follow up before end of treatment was one, which means the patient didn't complete their treatment, only one patient didn't. Uh, loss to follow up after end of treatment was seven, which means that they st uh, finished their treatment. However, they, they weren't uh, classified and we couldn't follow up to check to see whether they relapsed or not, which was 15%. Failure uh, was 1%, oh, sorry, 1, which is 2%. Uh, just to give you an idea, so the conclusions from this that we can draw, again, it's very interim, very small. You saw we had a, a complete follow-up of only 45, so we have to be a little bit cautious of the conclusions we draw. However, um, it is a simplification of diagnostic and treatment algorithm, which is pretty surprising. You would expect hepatitis C care to be in specialized centers. However, this was decentralized. If you remember, it's a primary healthcare setting. We had 78%, uh, um, which would had a SVR12, so that showed they had uh, successfully been cured. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it shows that it can it can provide care, care at primary healthcare setting to the affected communities at the community level, and therefore this feasible so far does uh, this model does seem feasible. The challenges uh, that we're still facing, however, and that need to be addressed are the need for referral of complex cases such as um, decompensated cases and things like these to hepatology centers. And so we're currently collaborating with uh, centers and specialists in Karachi to work with them and to have reference. Special, uh, specialists in place and see if we can go forward with that for the special cases that require further care. Um, in uh, IV drug users, which is intravenous drug users in the clinic, were not utilized in the study. We did not include them because this is a special population and even though Karachi has one of the highest heroin users uh, and IV in the world, um, it is very important to note that these require special case finding strategy. You have to be sensitive. We have to try not to alienate these people because we, we want to make sure we can complete the treatment that we get them on. Um, and I think Dimitri wanted to thank all these people. Uh, so again, on his behalf, most importantly, the patients who trusted the team with their health and all the contributors and the medical team and the community workers. Thank you. Thank you.